You know, we've been talking about things that uh, scare you to death, and so I thought it would be appropriate that we talk about my mother. <laughs> she takes a beating, doesn't she? She's very precious. She enjoys it, I think. Sort of. Okay, maybe not. But her hearing's not that good, so really. <laughs> now, here's the thing. My favorite thing to do, and I know I'm, I'm admitting this in front of all of you, so you'll send me letters. This is, I love to scare my mother. <laughs> it's just the whole shock value kind of a thing. It's just that <gasps> look on her face is so funny. And so you just work at that, you know what I mean? Because I, my mother loves me, and that is the most assuring thing in the entire world for any child, is to know that you have a fully devoted mother who adores you and can no longer chase you down. <laughs> Makes the whole unconditional thing really work. We were back there, I was giggling with uh, Nicole going, how, how do you think the show's going? Do you think people are enjoying this? And she goes, I, I think it's going good. I can't hear a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's real reassuring. <laughs> but the thing that it, it, it just struck me funny, because I've been talking about fear and all the things that I'm afraid of, and, and what I got tickled was, I have to admit to you, you guys scare me. <laughs> learned uh, uh, in a very tender way. God's love is the most unconditional thing I have ever found to be true in my life. You guys are a lot more picky. <laughs> I mean, I get letters over what my hair looked like, to, you know, what word I used, what word I stumbled on, and what it sounded like I used. <laughs> It's just, we have a tendency, if we're not careful, to pick each other apart. And, and so that does scare me. I grew up a preacher's kid, so I remember what it was like to live under the magnifying glass of the world. You know, and, and in a way, that was good. That accountability is all good, and, and, but sometimes we take it too far. I've learned one thing, and that is to loosen up and lighten up in my life and know that I can't please everybody and the whole wide world. So I have concentrated on pleasing one person, one person entity in my life, and that is God, the Father. Well, and my husband. <laughs> so I feel like if I please God and my husband, I've got it, and my mother. I, <laughs> just God, my husband, and my mother, and, and then your, and my children. You don't, you want your, <laughs> you want your children to be proud of you, you know, and not be embarrassed to be seen with you in the store, and so God, my husband, my mother, and my children, and my pastor means so much to me. He's a wonderful pastor, and so I want my church family to be proud of me, and I want God, and my husband, and my children, and my mother, and my pastor, and my whole church family to really be pleased with my life, and the homeowners association in my neighborhood. They're very particular about what you're allowed to put in your yard, and they don't like my old Chevette sitting there. It's, I call it art, and they said no. But still, but so God and my husband and my mother and my children, my church family, my pastor, and the homeowners association of uh, the little neighborhood I live in, if you get that straight, you've got it whooped. So there's actually nothing to be afraid of. The funniest thing is, this is true, my, uh, I, I don't mean to shock my mother, it's just that it, it is quite delightful. They have this new restaurant in downtown Nashville, Tennessee called, this is not an advertisement. So I won't tell you what it's called, because they're not paying me. Okay, I'll tell you what it's called, Blackstone. It's this real interesting pizza kind of a place, and when I saw it being built and what they were putting there in the front window, I couldn't wait to take my mother there. This is true. Because <laughs> my mother, all my life, told me that everything in the world leads to beer. <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> it's my mother's perspective is what was always so fun. Honey, don't dance. That leads to beer. <laughs> it's the truth. You can't say that. That leads to beer. <laughs> don't wear that. That leads to beer. You know, when they started advertising beer on television, that 
just rocked my mother's world. You know what I mean? Because we were very conservative growing up. I used to, this is true. I've told this before. We used to hide a radio under the bed, and you know, and wait till my parents left to uh, to uh, move slightly to the music. <laughs> This is the truth. One night we turned the radio on, my sisters and I, we wet paper towels, wrapped them up the bottom of our legs. Those were our go-go boots. <laughs> we turned it up real loud and heard, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> I knew I was going to burn. <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah in my Bible is not no bullfrog. be happy because we all know frogs lead to beer. <laughs> so I took my mom out to eat. And so you have to picture this and I'm not uh, advocating uh, alcohol by any means. Uh, you know, I will get a letter <laughs> from my entire church family, my homeowners association. So this is the truth. They built this restaurant around this huge distillery. It's just the, where they brew uh, beer. And so I thought it would be funny to just take Mother in there, see how long it took her to figure out where we were sitting there eating. You know? <laughs> but here's the thing. It's like the joke was on me because we walked through and she was like, Oh, it's, I haven't seen one of these for years. <laughs> we sat there, ordered our pizza, you know, and the little waitress came up and she goes, Oh, honey, let me ask you something is this particular one because my father wanted one of these for years and he had to do all his milking by hand. Now, this very moment, she just found out they weren't. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mother. I'm so sorry. But the Lord will forgive you for eating there, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just the funniest thing. My mother's hilarious. She's just very, very particular, you know. She used to call the preacher up. If one of us had the flu, she'd call him to ask if it's okay to take NyQuil, you know. <laughs> it's the truth, you know. She saw an empty bottle of NyQuil in the bathroom at my house not long ago and begged me. Brought home brochures and everything for some 12-step program. <laughs> She's just very conservative. She's very conservative. She's a wonderful lady. But I, there are some things about my past that I can't say that I'm particularly proud of, and so I'm not telling you about them. <laughs> I do have personal fears. I think it's kind of why I decided to put this whole night together. Is there are things that you just never dreamed anyone would know or find out. When you do begin to have some kind of a public life, you run into that one person that you knew in high school <laughs> that you wished had gone on to glory land before. <laughs> scares me more than running into somebody from high school is if you show if they show up with a little press badge national inquirer <laughs> that's my that terrifies me and i know that's crazy i know it's probably performance oriented kind of person you know but i stand in the grocery store and read the national inquirer making sure there's nothing on there about me <laughs> it's a true i stood there in the grocery line there's something about billy graham if they can find something on him they don't have to look very far for me, you know, and so that scares me. It just terrifies me because I, I gave my mama fits and I'm glad she is still here to see that her praying paid off a little. <laughs> Tonight she's decided to pray once more. The truth of the matter, my mother was a wonderful, uh, I keep saying like she's not here. My mother is a wonderful woman.